<laughs> Hi, good morning. Today I want to talk to you about why being an artist sucks. I'm also gonna do a video about why being an artist is awesome, but first I want to complain and I have a bunch of things that I want to talk about. The first thing is that I have a million ideas and I know in life you have to pick and choose and prioritize, but I think that kind of sucks. I have a big imagination and the world is a pretty inspiring place. I have ideas that come to me all the time in my waking life, but sometimes when I'm dreaming as well. And uh, I have to go from here <laughs> all the way to here. I have to decide on a medium, color, composition. And you know, for example, I am trying to do a painting and I, I already have the feeling that I want to get from it, which is of a person. I know I want it to be a man uh, going into the darkness, being shrouded by darkness. However, I'm not sure if I want it to be the full body of a man. I don't, I don't do those very much, so I want to sort of get into the figure, the entire human figure. Or if I want to do the top half, um, I was thinking of his back like seeing his back walking away I don't know how much detail I want to have in the background I'm not sure like if I want it to be like completely black or moody I don't know if I want it to be atmospheric in the background or if I want to have things there so that's what I mean by I have an idea and I have a concept but I actually have to narrow it down into something um, like that's clarified you know I have to make it pure <laughs> the, the, the idea um, and bring it into the physical like 2D world and not, you know, what's, whatever is going on in my head. So that would be the first thing. The second thing is I think something that a lot of creative people must get somewhat frustrated about. I'm not saying that, you know, maybe I just have a particular eye for colors or I can pick out hues that other people can't see or things like that, but I'm really not so sure that it's something innate. And so I would have to say that the second thing that I really don't uh, I don't want to say I don't like it because it's it's people being kind and flattering and complimenting but the word talent is something that sort of drives me a bit uh, uh, it gets on my nerves because I started doing art when I was maybe 13 or 14 and I had been doing it even before then but that was you know in in school or in the classroom so I really started doing it on my own on my own time and I spent hours upon hours upon hours of doing it I decided this is something that is really cool and I want to get better at it I want to master this skill and uh, so I remember going online and watching what other people did but I most of all remember having my ears plugged my um, door shut I would often before my school work too I would wake up in the middle of the night just because I like the, the peace and quiet in the house and I found it very meditative to do the things I wanted to do with my mind then and I, that's when I would make art and I spent a lot of time doing it so that's kind of annoying you know and, and it's also sort of um, <laughs> discouraging to anybody else who wants to become very good at something because if you want to be good at something you just you have to practice that is how you get better and you you can learn pretty quickly if you pick the right things you want to learn and not just do the same thing over and over but it takes time it takes time and effort and input it's not just I have some innate thing that makes me I don't know like <laughs> I don't know. Um, be special. Like that that's not how it works. The third thing is I have no control over how people want to look at my art. So sometimes I don't really mind this, but it is a little annoying because if I have an idea and I put it on the paper, especially if it's not something, you know, completely realistic, people can project anything they want onto your art. Uh, I actually, some part of me sort of enjoys hearing what other people have to say because I'm like, oh, I never thought about that. And it's, it's pretty cool to sort of put something out into the world and then have people interact with it and tell you what they think and um, the, the sort of interaction. I, I, I do like that. But I have no control over how someone wants to use my art. Maybe they want to like, I don't mean like using my image, but if they want to say what this represents to me is XYZ to someone else, even though that's not at all what I intended, that that can happen. So that's something that, you know, as a creative person, 
it can be a bit frustrating at times. This is one of my favorite annoyances because it's kind of my fault. Uh, I did bring some things with me, but I would say, I'm just gonna show you first before I say. This is a jacket that I wear all the time. Yeah, it was actually a gift. Um, this, if you can see it, uh, maybe I should start a little bit back. That's oil paint. No, sorry, that's thinner. And uh, I don't know if I got it all out. Here's some oil paint, some, some white oil paint. Uh, I actually got a bunch of it off because I constantly have to clean my clothes. But I never wear this jacket when I'm painting. I always fold it over on the other side and then rest it wherever I'm resting it. And it somehow gets paint on it all the time. I also tend to get paint up on my eyes. I guess I'm just touching myself. I get it in my hair sometimes. And um, you know, it's, it's a minor annoyance here. Here's more paint. But everything I own, ends up getting paint on it. And uh, usually the stuff I really like because I wear them so much. And uh, let me show you some more first. You can see, I think you can see some paint on there. Paint, more paint, more paint. I actually do wear different clothes in the studio when I feel like it. These are my current painting pants. So I do wear these when I am painting, but Something else that I do is what I'm doing right now, which is that I wear my clothes um, backwards. I'm trying to find find the tag on this to show you. Actually, I think this is on the right way, but I'm gonna switch it, switch it over. So I do do that as a remedy to the situation, but I I do like to present myself properly because I would literally get yelled at for not cleaning my shoes when I left the house growing up. I like to wear decent looking clothes and I also like to paint and I have a life so I can't just dress like I'm a, an artist all the time because that's weird because I'm not just an artist. Uh, so that's something else that's annoying about being an artist. Number five, your mind, eye and what goes on in your head is no longer private. Of course, no one can ever really know what you're thinking, but it takes a lot of courage to show your work. I remember, because it was something that I just did in my own, on my own, um, in my room, when I was by myself, and it was something between me and myself. <laughs> it takes, I think, a significant amount of courage um, from personal experience to show that to other people. I mean, now I'm pretty used to it, but and I mean, I would encourage anyone who's afraid, just get over it. But it does take courage to show your work to other people because you're putting your, the things you care about or um, something that you put time and you invested in and you built up into the world. And you know, people can do and say whatever they want and that's fine, that's their right. But uh, I would say that that's another reason why it's <sighs> being an artist sucks. <laughs> that's another reason why. <laughs> this one is a problem that I have had for many years. And it has to do with critiquing and being taught art. As way back as third form, which is ninth grade, I got into an argument with my teacher because she did something that she really should not have done. Now, this lady is a very nice woman and I ran into her a couple years after I graduated high school and it was a pleasant experience because she's a really nice lady. And we got along, um, but this one time, I don't even think I told her how upset I was about it, but this one time I was doing a painting of a girl who was swinging um, above the water on like a, a heart, which is not a heart. I don't know if I can maybe show you that image. And um, my teacher drew on my painting because she thought that I should have a shadow on the water. And I know that when there's a light source and you have an object and it's solid, it blocks the light because the light can't come through and there's a shadow. I get that, but I don't want to put a shadow there. And it's my painting and I have the right to decide if I want to put a shadow there. And I even had a conceptual reason why I didn't want a the shadow there because it was about time and 
um, state of life and about reflection on life and being at a certain stage in life. And I wanted it to be more of a ethereal sort of thing, more than a grounded, fully grounded here on earth thing. So there was a reason why I didn't want to put a shadow on the water. And if you are critiquing someone's work or someone is criti critiquing your work and they know your end goal, then it's totally okay because they're helping you get to where you're trying to go. But if it's just someone waltzing and trying to tell you how your art should be, it's really annoying. And that also segues into another thing, which is just going to art school. And if you're not teaching certain things like composition or realistic things like proportion that are really important to get right when you're trying to um, render the observable reality that we live in, then it's really subjective. And you know, having letter grades on things that are super subjective sort of doesn't make sense to me and never has and possibly never will. I know you, you have to, you can grade for growth and development, but I don't know, art world is pretty subjective and if it's not realistic stuff, I think it's pretty difficult, pretty difficult to judge. I really like to make art. I really do. However, I don't like to do everything and I pick and choose my interests because that's what would make me want to spend lots of time doing it. I think you might know where I'm going with this. If you are ever tempted to ask a creative person to do something for you for free or with little compensation, don't do it. Just don't do it. It's disrespectful to the talent that you like and the time and the effort that it takes. If I approach you and I say, would you like, see I'm asking you, would you like to be involved in this thing that I'm doing? Okay, or if it's a subject that already interests me, okay, you know, that it's mutually beneficial and I'm getting something out of it. But I'm not just gonna do something for you just because you want me to do it. Why would I do that? You wouldn't do that. So why will you ask me to do that? I know most people are not tempted to do this. Most decent people, like only some people have really asked for that. And it definitely dies down the older you get because you actually have expenses, but that you are paying for because you technically always have expenses for yourself. Uh, so just if you're tempted, don't, don't do the right thing. <laughs> Don't do that. You know, offer something in return. It doesn't have to be money. It can be something else, but just offer some sort of compensation and see if the person wants to do it. And if they don't want to do it, then they don't have to do it. And it doesn't make them, nothing's wrong with them for not wanting to do it. Cause you think, oh, it wouldn't even take that time because it's this small thing. If they don't want to do it, then why would they do it? I'm not sure what number this is, but the next thing is I'm never happy with my work. If I don't look at it for like a year and then I go back to it, I can actually appreciate the art. But if I'm just walking by for, just like walking by, it's okay. But if I look at it for a minute, you know, just to study it, get a feel for it, while I've been working on it for, or maybe that day I was working on it for a few hours, and then I'll say, you know, I think I should change this. And then I look at it some more and I want to change that. And then I will go and change things and then before you know it, I'm changing a million different things. So, you know, uh, with my senior project, I was working on it up until the very last minute and I didn't decide that I was done until I had run out of time. So, and that's when I decided that it was now finished. And then the final and biggest thing is finding the time. In order for me to make really good art, and to really, really enjoy it, I have to have big chunks of time where nobody interrupts me, my phone isn't ringing, I don't have something on my mind that's pressuring me, and I have a stretch of time where I can go get over the process of, oh, I don't really feel like doing this, to starting, to being slightly bored even though I'm starting, and then about maybe like half an hour if I'm just doing it, I really get into it and I, I just, I'm just into it, like completely into what I am doing. I know they call it a state of flow and it's really hard to find that time. Something that I do is I wake up early in the morning and I don't turn my phone on. Like I, I just, for um, a certain amount of time and I try and do all my creative stuff in that time frame so that I am not just bothered by everything else in my life. 
So I would say that that has to be the biggest thing. And it really connects back to the first thing because I have these ideas and I have the imagination and this burning desire to get it, get it out. Get it out onto the paper or canvas since I mostly paint now. And um, you have to make it happen. That's it, hope you enjoyed. Please subscribe if you like and I will see you next time.